mashed potato. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to Drum Food. I'm Nolan Silverstein. Uh, tonight we're going to show you how to make kabocha squash porridge, a Korean style porridge. And the first thing that we need to do is break down our kabocha squash. So I have one whole squash right here. And what I want to do first is peel the squash. Easiest to peel the squash while it's still whole. All right, after your squash is about 90% peeled, we're going to process this. We're going to cut it in half first. So let's find an easy way to cut. Just grab our knife. I've got a little bit of the top still here. There we go. All right, so now we've cut our kabocha squash in half. We need to take the seeds out. We're going to save those for later. So I'm just going to take a regular spoon and grab a small bowl for our seeds. There you go. One hollowed out half of our squash. I'm scraping out the last of our seeds. Add those to our bowl. Okay, so there are my two hollowed out halves of kabocha squash. And we're going to chunk our squash and get it ready for our porridge. We're ready to steam. So I'm just going to grab this, place it face side down, cut off the top and bottom. There you go. And it's a very, very tough squash, so you do want to be careful while you're cutting. I'm just going to chunk this into about one inch pieces. Here we have our kabocha squash cut into one inch chunks and ready for tonight's Korean style porridge. All right, here we have everything you need to cook along at home. You need one kabocha squash that has been diced into one inch cubes. We need brown sugar, toasted pumpkin seeds, up to four cups of water, and sweet rice flour, also known as glutinous rice flour. Uh, you're also going to need a large steamer and a blender. So we need to take all of our kabocha squash and we need to add it to our large steamer pan, which we have right here. I'll take that squash, pour it in, give it a quick shake to settle, cover and steam for 25 to 30 minutes until it is very soft. So it's been about 20 minutes on our steamed kabocha. Now part of making this soup though is we want to over steam the squash. So I'm going to give this five more minutes. All right, now that our squash is properly steamed and mushy, it is time to blend. Our squash is nice and loose. I'm going to get all of my squash out of our steamer and into our blender. Your squash should have the consistency of soft sweet potato at this point. The squash is very hot, so be careful. I'm going to place the lid on the blender. I'm going to first start by pureeing the squash, just lightly. I'm already noticing that the squash is too thick to just puree by itself. So we're going to add about one cup of water to start. There you go, about one cup of water in there. We're looking for a relatively light texture on the squash, sort of like a soup. You notice it's still too thick. Now it's like a pudding. I want a soup, so add another cup of water. Once again, cover and blend. Now we're getting to more of a texture of a puree, but not quite. OK, we're going to add another cup of water. So we're adding almost an entire quart of water. There is our kabocha squash puree ready to be cooked into our soup. I'm going to grab a large saucepan right here, pour all of our kabocha squash puree into the saucepan. I'm going to add three tablespoons of brown sugar. We need one and a half tablespoons of rice flour. I'm going to do this in half tablespoons, that way I don't have to get anything extra dirty. One, two, three. There we go. One and a half tablespoons of rice flour. This rice flour is a very, very strong thickening agent. We're going to add this and cook it for about five to ten more minutes, and that will thicken. Um, all of this rice flour will actually go a really long way as it expands and creates gluten in tonight's recipe. We're going to stir in all of our sweet rice flour. Uh, just sprinkle that on top. Do not add it all in in one clump. There we go. Turn that on to a medium-high heat. Stir and cook for five to ten minutes. 
Uh, stir your soup occasionally. Uh, something that you may find dissimilar in this, if you've ever had congee or porridge, this does not have rice grains in it. This kind of uh, porridge is simply a squash base, so there is no added texture of rice. This should feed several people. It's good as a side dish with roasted meats or on its own as the main course of the meal. Now, this is also going to need some salt. Um, traditionally, when you serve juke, it is undersalted. It is almost always not salty enough when you get it in a restaurant or when someone serves it to you. That is because everyone has their own salt preference. Um, it's better to undersalt a dish before you give it to someone than to oversalt a dish. Um, you can't go back from too much salt. So, we are not going to salt our juke at all. No salt in the porridge, and that is so that whoever eats the uh, porridge can add salt himself. Um, be sure to serve this with salt and encourage your guests or the people eating with you to not be bashful about salting their own food. So here we have our Korean style porridge. And we're gonna top this with some toasted squash seeds. Kabocha squash porridge. Thank you for watching Jerome Food. You're watching DromeBox.com.